Hi all. As you know, there are professional and amateur radios. Amateur ones differ from professional ones in the presence of a large number of different functions and features that professionals do not need. And here is one of the varieties of amateur radio, this is a VHF transceiver. Almost like a shortwave transceiver, only operating in the VHF bands. And this time I will tell you about the VHF in a 2 meter band transceiver manufactured in the 70s called Featuring 220. The Featuring 220 transceiver manufactured by the Japanese company Yesu was sold in many countries under the Summercamp trademark, it also had the Fort 220 model. Summercamp FT220 and Yesu FT220 are the same thing, just different brands under which it was sold. We won't figure out why it happened now, but rather let's talk about electronics, how the transceiver is arranged and what characteristics and capabilities it has. This transceiver has been produced and sold since 1974, that is, this is a technique of the 70s. Designed for radio amateurs, for operation in the amateur 2 meters band. Frequency range from 144 to 146 megahertz. There is no complete coverage of the entire professional VHF band. This transceiver is intended for radio amateurs only. He works in frequency modulation, in single sideband modulation, upper and lower sideband, and in the telegraph. This is not just a VHF radio designed for radio communication with a neighboring house, but it is a full-fledged transceiver, it can conduct long-distance communications in the VHF band using directional antennas. The body dimensions of this transceiver are comparable to those of a conventional shortwave transceiver. In general, there is no difference between HF or VHF device, in fact it is one and the same. It differs only in the frequency range. A transformer power supply is built into the case of this transceiver, for power supply from an AC network of 220 volts or 110, where such voltage is used, but it can also be powered from an external source or a 12 volts battery. There is a connector for connecting sources on the rear wall of the transceiver case power supply, either a cable for connection to the AC mains or a cable for connection to a 12 volt source. The output power of the transmitter of this transceiver is 10 watts in all modes, and in single sideband modulation, and in the telegraph in the carrier, and in frequency modulation. The element base and circuitry of the transceiver corresponds to the 70s, it is assembled entirely on semiconductor elements, there are several dozen transistors and several microcircuits. By its architecture, it is a superheterodyne. In the single sideband modulation mode and CW, in the reception mode it has one intermediate frequency of 10.7 MHz. On it, the main filtering, including a single band signal, takes place using a quartz filter. In the frequency modulation mode, a completely different separate if path is used, which works with the first if, also 10.7 MHz, and there are two ifs equal to 455 kHz. Demodulation takes place on it. In the transmit mode, this is also a superheterodyne with one conversion. The signal is always formed at a frequency of 10.7 MHz and then added to the local oscillator signal, and a high frequency signal is obtained in the range of 144 to 146 MHz. There is no frequency synthesizer, there is no digital frequency stabilization, there is just a variable frequency oscillator that operates at a frequency of 8 MHz. Its signal is mixed with the frequency of one of the four quartz resonators, and the frequency of the local oscillator is obtained, which is already subtracted from the signal frequency to obtain an intermediate frequency of 10.7, or added to the intermediate frequency of 10.7 in the transmit mode. Here is such a simple transceiver circuitry, for the 70s, especially for an amateur device, this is quite normal. The entire operating frequency range from 144 to 146 MHz is divided into four subbands. As you already understood, each subband uses its own quartz, and these bands are switched by a four-position switch on the front panel. The transceiver overlap in each subband is 500 kHz. To tune the transceiver in range, there is a large vernier knob on the front panel, combined with a mechanical scale. The scale consists of two parts, coarse and fine. The fine scale has a division value of 1 kHz, this is a very smooth setting. Coarse, respectively, has a division value of 100 kHz. These two scales are visible simultaneously. Turning the handle, they rotate both. Operating modes, that is, types of modulation, are switched by buttons. There are four buttons on the front panel, one of them is blue. This is a standard button, it should be blue. This is the frequency modulation button. 
Next to it are three buttons for turning on single sideband modulation and telegraph, and on the very left there is still a red button, it's just a power button for the entire transceiver. There are also five buttons on the right side of the front panel of the transceiver, and the left of them turns on the variable frequency oscillator mode, and the next four buttons turn on the channel mode. Each of these buttons must have its own channel crystal set to its own frequency. Quartz should be at a frequency of 8 MHz, at a frequency of a variable frequency oscillator, from 8 to 8.5, respectively, in each of the four sub-bands 144,144.5 144.5 144.5 144 and so on, in each of the four sub-bands the channel frequency will be different, then it can be said that the transceiver does not have four channels, but four times four channels, in each sub-band there are four channels. There is a radio frequency gain control knob, of course, a volume control knob, a squelch threshold adjustment knob. The squelch works in both frequency and single sideband modulation. It is very convenient to use it in all modes. There is a frequency shift knob, and there is even a 600 kHz repeater shift, which is turned on by a separate front panel button. Button with fixation. When this mode is turned on, the green light of the backlight of the inscription, repeater mode, lights up. In this case, the relay will switch the quartz resonator in the local oscillator, and therefore the frequency in the transmission mode will be shifted by 600 kHz. I will try to make a radio connection using this transceiver with radio amateurs, which is located at a distance of about 10 kilometers from me. From my side there will be a quarter wave ground plane antenna, on the roof, from his side on the balcony antenna. Therefore, the signal level will not be very high. I use a dynamic microphone, of this design. This is not an original, not a standard microphone from the transceiver. First I call in frequency modulation, and then we'll see. R3TAJVIM RA3TLB, over. I receive you well. Now I'm working with the FT220 transceiver, frequency modulation and VFO tuning. Is it normal for me to stay at this frequency? Over. Yes, everything is fine, you are on the frequency. I receive you very well too, my S meter shows 8 points on the FT897. And now my balcony antenna works. Received. I receive you very well. The squelch works for me here in this old device, and in general the sound is excellent. Over. Yes, the transmission is also normal, the modulation is good high frequency. Everything is great, let's try the upper sideband at about the same frequency. Over. Let's go. You talk, and I will tune into you. Still, I have a VFO setup. Okay, let's move on. Seven eight nine ten raw three TLBR three TAJB. Yes, I receive you. Now adjust it. At first he was strongly on the side, but now he stood up more precisely. How do I stand there on the frequency? Over. Yes, you are on the frequency. Seems to be more or less fine-tuned. A little bit to the side. Now I'm more precisely tuned in. How is it now? Over. Now on the frequency. What you need. Over. Yes, I can hear you well now too. Normal timbre of voice, such a real one. Over. Yeah. Well, your old apparatus works fine. Okay thank you. Then at the reception I will again be in frequency modulation. Since this transceiver has a variable frequency oscillator, a quartz calibrator that outputs a signal every 100 kHz, and you can check the accuracy of the scale adjustment using this quartz calibrator. The operating mode of the pointer indicator is switched by a four position switch. And also this switch turns on the quartz calibrator. Of course, there is nothing special in the design and capabilities of this transceiver in our time. And in the 70s, in general, there was nothing special either. 
But it is interesting to look at the technology of that time, to see how it works, to conduct radio communications with it. Unfortunately, it will not work to listen to various service signals, since the frequency range is very narrow. Interestingly, this range is very narrow and is also limited by a narrow band filter at the input. In the reception mode, the signal from the antenna is fed to the only input oscillatory circuit in the gate circuit of the high frequency amplification stage on double gate field effect transistors. And after this high frequency amplification stage, there is already a three section band pass filter with a bandwidth of 144,146 MHz. The three section filter provides very very good filtering of signals outside this range. Even if we put other range quartz now, in order to listen not to 144 MHz, but for example 155, then the input filter will not allow us to do this, since it is very narrow band. A cascade on a single bipolar transistor is used as a mixer. This is probably the worst mixer you can imagine, but this transceiver operates in a very narrow bandwidth, and all out of band signals that could cause problems with this mixer with insufficient dynamic range are filtered out by a narrow band input filter. And therefore, such a mixer is quite acceptable in this apparatus. Unfortunately, this particular copy of the transceiver has already been in the hands of many fans of climbing with a screwdriver and a soldering iron, and this transceiver, of course, was inoperable. I had to repair it in order to be able to show you his work now. Therefore, you can see some changes in its design, namely, the output transistor of the transmitter power amplifier has already been installed domestically, since the standard one has not survived to this day. But in general, amateur radio equipment can be said to be specially designed for radio amateurs to climb there with a screwdriver and a soldering iron. And the top cover is very easy to open. By removing two screws, you can take it out like this, and here most of the circuit is available. But the other part of the circuit is located at the bottom of the case, in order to get there, you have to remove the entire casing from this transceiver. This device weighs 8.5 kilograms. There is a carrying handle on the sidewall. It is quite convenient to carry, but 8 kilograms is still a lot. Inside the case there is a built-in power supply on a 50 Hz power transformer. Neither in the design nor in the circuitry of this transceiver is there anything that a radio amateur could not do even then in the 70s. But still there are some interesting points. First, it is an intermediate frequency of 10.7 MHz. In single sideband modulation, the SSB signal is shaped at this frequency, and the main filtering in SSB mode occurs at this frequency. This is surprising, since the most commonly used filters are 455 kHz. And here I had to make a single band filter at 10.7 specifically for such a high intermediate frequency. The second point is that such a simple mixer is used on a single bipolar transistor. I would say that this is a cheaper design, a simplification of the design, but on the other hand, this transceiver uses a narrow band three section filter at the input, which cannot be called a simplification. And even more so, the five section filter at the output of the local oscillator cannot be called a simplification. Let me remind you that the local oscillator is complex and consists of a quartz oscillator and a VFO. In order for the signal of this local oscillator to be as clean as possible from any harmonics, a five-section bandpass filter is applied at its output. This clearly cannot be called a reduction in cost and simplification of the design. But for some reason, such a simple mixer on a single bipolar transistor was used. Another of the interesting points in the circuitry of this transceiver, I would like to note that two absolutely independent IF paths are used for single sideband and for frequency modulation. It often happens that a part of the path for all other modes is used for frequency modulation, or vice versa, and there are absolutely two independent paths. It is clear that in the frequency modulation mode it would not be possible to use narrowband filters at 10.7, but the filters could be switched, for frequency modulation a wider band filter would be turned on, and for a single band filter a 3 kHz filter would be turned on. But here they used completely separate independent IF paths. In the transmission mode, all stages of the power amplifier, including the output one, of course, work in a linear mode, since they have to amplify, among other things, a single sideband signal. The sensitivity of the transceiver is declared 0.5 microvolts. Not like modern devices write 0.150.13 microvolts, but as much as 0.5. But it is stated no worse than 0.5. Actually it's usually better. And now, in the single sideband modulation mode, we hear ethereal noises that come from antenna. If I turn off the antenna now, then there will be practically no noise. It makes noise now without an antenna much quieter. 
This suggests that even it deuces the noise level in the city is quite large. These noises are perfectly audible on the transceiver. This concludes my story about the Yesu FT-220 or Summercamp FT-220 VHF transceiver. There is exactly the same transceiver, but for the 50 MHz band. It is called FT-620. Its appearance is absolutely the same, only instead of the frequency modulation mode, it has amplitude modulation. I don't know why it is needed, probably in those years amplitude modulation was also popular in the 6 meter band. Thanks for watching this video. Use various means of radio communication, radios, watch my videos, subscribe to the channel. Alexei Eigenen was here, bye everyone.